A young mathematician just proved that math can't explain everything. Not now, not ever. He escapes the Nazis, crossing Siberia, Japan, and the Pacific. He becomes Einstein's closest friend, the man Einstein walks home with every day. He claimed the US Constitution could lead to dictatorship, then refused to eat and vanished into silence. This is the story of the man who proved there are things we can never prove. This is the life and death of Kurt Gödel. Kurt Gödel was born on April 28, 1906, into a German-speaking family in Brünn. His father owned a thriving textile business. His mother, cultured and protective, adored her two sons. From the start, Kurt was different, quiet, watchful, and intense. His family called him De Herr Warum, Mr. Y. At age six, Kurt fell ill with rheumatic fever. He would never again trust his body. He became anxious, constantly checking his pulse and temperature. But in that fragile body lived a mind in overdrive. By age 10, he could recite long passages in Latin and solve advanced math problems in his head. As Kurt grew, so did Europe's unrest. World War I shattered the empire around him. His family's world of comfort turned unstable. But while the world crumbled, Kurt escaped into books, numbers, and the stars. His questions grew deeper, not just why is the sky blue, but what is truth? In 1924, Kurt Gödel entered the University of Vienna. He planned to study physics, but found himself drawn to something deeper, the language behind all science, mathematics. He asked his professors harder and harder questions. He was looking for something no one else could define, absolute certainty. Vienna was buzzing with ideas. Scientists and philosophers formed what they called the Vienna Circle. They believed all knowledge must come from logic or experiments. Gödel sat among them silently. He listened, but he did not agree. He believed there were truths beyond what humans could prove. In 1929, at just 23, Gödel stunned his professors. He proved the completeness theorem showing that in first-order logic, every truth could be proven. For a moment, it seemed he had found the foundation of all logic. But something darker was waiting, something that would flip this idea upside down. Gödel wasn't satisfied. He wondered, what if some truths can't be proven ever? He began crafting a new kind of sentence, one that would turn logic on itself. The world thought it was solving math. Gödel was about to show it was impossible. With one quiet proof, Kurt Gödel would set fire to the very structure of human reason. His theorems would shake science, disturb philosophy, and inspire the first ideas of artificial intelligence. But no one knew that yet. The most important truth in modern logic had just been born in complete silence. Alone in a tiny apartment, Gödel worked for months in secret. He wasn't building a machine or solving a puzzle. He was crafting a paradox. He used numbers to talk about logic and logic to talk about itself. What he discovered would tear open the foundation of mathematics. In 1931, Gödel published his incompleteness theorem. It said, in any math system powerful enough to describe numbers, there are true statements that can never be proven. Truth and proof, once thought to be the same, were now forever apart. The reaction was stunned silence, then panic. Hilbert's dream of building a perfect, provable system had been shattered. Mathematicians argued, how could math be real if it couldn't be complete? 
Godel, still in his twenties, had destroyed the foundation they were standing on. Fame came quickly, but Godel didn't care about praise. He hated crowds, ignored compliments, and trusted almost no one. While others celebrated his genius, he returned home, to work alone. To him, truth mattered more than people. The Vienna Circle didn't know what to do with Gödel. They wanted logic to remove mystery. Gödel added more of it. He believed in things they rejected, like absolute truth, even God. Quietly, he began to drift away, and the circle began to crumble. Behind his genius, fear had started to grow. Gödel began obsessing over illness, poisoning, and unseen enemies. His body felt weak, but his mind would not rest. The more he understood the universe, the more he mistrusted it. In 1938, the Nazis took over Austria. Gödel was not Jewish, but he was in danger. Many of his colleagues had already vanished. He and Adele knew they had to run. They fled east, through Soviet Russia, through Japan, then across the Pacific. It was a journey around the world, just to stay alive. In 1940, Gödel arrived in America, a broken Europe behind him, a strange new world ahead. He carried with him a mind sharper than ever and darker thoughts he could no longer silence. He would soon find a place among the greatest minds in the world. But even among giants, Kurt Gödel would remain completely alone. Princeton was peaceful, too peaceful. Gödel was given a quiet office at the Institute for Advanced Study. No students, no deadlines, just time. He now walked among titans, John von Neumann, Hermann Weil, and Albert Einstein. But even here he kept to himself, drifting through the halls like a shadow of logic. Then came Einstein. Gödel found someone who didn't just tolerate his questions. He loved them. They took long walks together, every day talking about space, time, death, and truth. Einstein would later say he came to the office each day only for the walk home with Gödel. In 1949, Gödel stunned even Einstein. He found a solution to Einstein's own equations, a model of the universe where time could loop back on itself. In this world, you could, in theory, travel into your own past. Gödel had built a mathematical model of time travel. The world didn't quite know what to make of it. Mathematically, Gödel was correct. Physically, maybe. Philosophically, definitely. He wasn't just questioning time. He was asking if time was even real. But the more he proved, the more distant he became from the rest of science. In 1948, Gödel applied for U.S. citizenship. He studied the Constitution like it was a logical system. He told his friends, I have found a flaw, a logical inconsistency that could allow a dictatorship. They begged him not to bring it up during the interview. But Gödel couldn't help himself. He believed logic always mattered. The judge said, It's lucky something like Nazi Germany can't happen here. Gödel replied, actually, it can, I can prove it. Morgenstern kicked him under the table. Einstein quickly changed the subject. Somehow Gödel passed the test and became a US citizen with a proof he never revealed. Fame meant nothing to him, trust even less. Gödel started skipping lectures, avoiding letters, ignoring old friends. He believed people were watching him, that he might be poisoned. Only Adele, his wife, could prepare his food. Only she was safe. Einstein was gone. The circle was gone. Europe was gone. Gödel remained in a room of papers, theories, and fear. He had shown the world that not everything can be proven. And now he was trapped inside a system of his own. In his final years, Gödel rarely left the house. 
he stopped attending talks, ignored invitations and withdrew from colleagues. He believed his phone was bugged. He triple-checked locks. He wasn't hiding from the world. He was hiding from something much harder to escape, his own mind. His closest friend, Einstein, died in 1955. Gödel lost more than a friend. He lost the one person who truly understood him. With each passing year, his ideas grew deeper and darker. He scribbled new theories about God, infinity, and the soul. Most never left the room. He even wrote a formal proof for the existence of God. It wasn't poetry. It was pure logic, using symbols and modal logic to describe perfection. Gödel never published it. He feared it would be misunderstood or ignored. Years after his death, scholars found it in his papers and proved it consistent using a computer. In 1977, Adele was hospitalized. She had always cooked his meals, the only food he trusted. With her gone, Gödel refused to eat, not out of protest, but out of fear. He believed someone would poison him and no one could convince him otherwise. For weeks, he ate almost nothing his weight dropped below 70 pounds. Caregivers tried to help, but he refused them. He trusted no one. In his notebooks, he kept writing right up to the end. His final entries, equations, scattered thoughts, and silence. On January 14, 1978, Kurt Gödel died of self-induced starvation. He left behind no farewell, no will, no final statement. The man who had proven what could not be proven died because of what could not be trusted. His brilliance outlived his body, but his fear that lived with him to the very end. Years after his death, researchers opened Gödel's personal archive. Inside were thousands of pages, formulas, arguments and thoughts no one had ever seen. A new generation began to understand what he left behind. His questions were still alive and many remained unanswered. Kurt Gödel showed the world that some truths can't be proven. That reason has limits, and within those limits, wonder begins. He lived in fear. He died alone, but he changed everything. He didn't want fame. He wanted truth, and he found it.